Please join me in God's show. No more knobs, no more knobs, no more knobs, no more knobs. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to those who are here at the temple, as well as those who have joined us by Zoom. Uh, can you all hear me okay on Zoom? Okay. Um, I must apologize for last week. Uh, last week that we were having some uh, technical issues, audio issues. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I was looking at all the connections and thinking, oh, uh, so there's something wrong with our connection, and I forgot it was the simplest uh, error that I made on this uh, Zoom application. There's a little microphone, and uh, I forgot to switch over the microphone from my computer audio to our main audio. So it was just a simple switch uh, that I had forgotten to do. And so uh, I apologize for that, but sometimes you're looking at the, on a grander scale, trying to find, you know, there's a major issue and it was just a very simple thing. So um, uh, those who joined last week, hey, maybe I could use the same Dharma talk from last week. You probably didn't hear it anyways. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I won't be doing that, but um, we'll begin uh, this, this morning's uh, service with a moment of silent meditation, followed by the recitation of the name of the Buddha or the own name, but so. Are you muted? Are you muted? Hmm? No, I just try to take it up and can hear you. Yeah.
Uh, next, we'll have the chanting of the Bandana Tisarana, and I'm going to just bring that up on the screen for those of you at home. And uh, for those of you who are in the temple, it is on page uh, 325 of your Purple Satan, uh, unless you want to watch the screen and, and read along. Uh, so we will have the uh, recitation of the Bandana Tisarana. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambudasa homage to him the exalted one the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one. Udam saranam gachami. I go to the Buddha for guidance. Dhamma saranam gachami. I go to the Dharma for guidance. Sangam saranam gachami. I go to the Sangha for guidance. Namandavs. Uh, next, we'll have the reading of our pledge, and it's on your screen. Unfortunately, it's not in our uh, Satan yet. I need to print it out and put it in our Satan. But our pledge, if you could join me in reading this, our pledge. Breaking out of my shell, I shall carefully share a warm smile and speak gentle words, just like the kind Buddha. Not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall be open-minded and act accordingly, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, I shall share in the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life we have received, I shall live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who continues to emancipate all. Namandos, namandos. And then now we will have the sutra chanting, and we'll be chanting the Junirai today. In the purple Satan, it's on page 63. Namandos, 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 namandos. No Yo, 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 yo,
Uh, please join me in reading the English translation, uh, which you'll find either in your text, Satan, it's on page 70, um, or on the screen here. The Twelve Adorations, Junirai translation. Before Amida Buddha, whom heavenly beings worship, I humble myself in deepest reverence. In his wondrous land of bliss, surrounded is he by countless bodhisattvas. His golden form shines forth, pure like the king of Mount Sumeru. His practice of truth is steadfast, like an elephant's pace. His eyes radiate like pure blue lotus blossoms. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. His countenance is perfectly pure and round, like the full moon. His majestic light shines like a thousand suns and moons. His voice is like a heavenly drum, yet like a heavenly bird, Kokila. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. Avalokiteshvara wears upon his crown the image of Amida adorned with many precious jewels. He subdues the arrogance of demons and heretics. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. Incomparable, vast, and pure, his virtues are. Clearly extending like vast open space, his acts freely benefiting all. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. Bodhisattvas from the Ten Quarters and countless Maras, demons, always venerate him. He dwells with vow power for the sake of all beings. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. In the golden treasure pond where the lotus flowers bloom, established with goodness is a wondrous throne. Where reigns the Buddha like the king of the mounts. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. From the ten quarters bodhisattvas come, revealing wondrous powers, they attain blissful state. Honoring his face, they offer eternal homage. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. All things are transient and without self, like the moon on water, lightning, shadow, or the dew. The Dharma cannot be expressed by words, the Buddha proclaimed. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. No words of evil are in his land, no fear of evildoers, nor evil past. With sincere heart, all beings worship him. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. His land of infinite expediencies is without degenerate things or wicked beings. Upon rebirth, non-retrogressive Bodhi does one attain. Thus I prostrate myself before Amida Buddha. Thus have I praised the virtues of Amida Buddha. Boundless are they like the water of the sea. Upon receiving these pure and good qualities, may all beings be reborn into his land. Namandavs, Namandavs, Namandavs. Namandavs. 
Okay, let me stop sharing. Okay, now, no, no, just a minute. Just remove spotlight, okay. So, um, once again, uh, welcome and good morning. And, uh, you know, as a minister, a Kaikeshi minister, um, and I've mentioned this before, one of the more challenges of, of being a minister is to um, weekly give a Dharma talk, a Dharma message, right? Um, I know it must be difficult having to listen to the same sensei week in, week out. And I thank you all for uh, being patient and, and uh, listening to me. Uh, but on the other hand, it's just as uh, difficult having to see, uh, talk to the same people week in, week out. So uh, there's challenges on both sides. And um, so as part of that, you know, when, when I prepare my Dharma messages, I often will take events that occur throughout the week. And these uh, events, you know, help me uh, to come up with different ideas. So I wanted to start off by sharing um, a little lighthearted uh, story. Um, in our altar, we have many forms of offerings to the Buddha, right? So, you know, the flowers, the fruits, and the other one that's most common is this rice, obuppa, right? And I've talked about this before. In fact, you know, the one I'm holding is pretty big, but this pales in comparison, like at the Honganji, our mother temple, uh, the rice that they offer that is about the base is about this wide, and it's the size of a human head. So you can imagine rice that's piled up like this. And um, sometimes people ask, well, what happens to that rice after the services? And in fact, um, traditionally at temples, a lot of places, the, the temple family will eat that rice afterwards. Or in the case of the Honganji, they will um, uh, give it to the people that volunteer. So uh, here, um, like our family has been eating the obupan. Um, I, I make it every week and then take it home. But uh, recently, a little while from a little while back, um, our secretary, Renako-san, has been coming out on Sundays. And uh, Renako-san, actually, uh, she's uh, uh, some of you know her and some of you may not know her she's been here for about a year now yeah she's been with us uh, working part-time first and she's uh, spending more hours now uh, helping out with Keiko's uh, work as well and so Denoko-san has three young kids and uh, Denoko-san actually uh, has an interesting background her grandmother I believe she said uh, came from a temple family so she remembers going and visiting her grandma's place, a, t a temple, and uh, eating this, this rice. So um, on occasion, I gave her the, the rice after the service. And Nina Kwatsa has three young daughters. So when uh, she took the, the rice home, um, she explained what it was. and. Um, in order to make it easier for the kids to understand, um, so in English, so it, it literally in Japanese, when you say obupan, this is called obupan, okay? Um, butsu is, uh, uh, is Buddha, and han is rice. So it's Buddha rice, okay, literally. Um, it, and it's the rice offered to the Buddha. But uh, for her kids to understand, 
Uh, it was Nena Kosan said when she was a little child, when she would go to visit her grandmother's place and have that rice, um, her her grandmother would say that if you eat this rice, you'll get smarter, right? So uh, she told her kids this, and so then her her daughters started calling it magical rice. So now this is a magical rice, right? And um, the funny thing was, uh, one week. Uh, one of her daughters said to her, she said, I don't know if I'm not eating enough of it, but I don't seem to be getting any smarter. My, my test marks at school my, uh, aren't going up. So I need to eat more of the magical rice, she said. So that, that was just a little funny incident that happened. But kids are really wonderful in that way, in that they're uh, very pure, sincere in, in many aspects. And this past week, I had um, two classes from uh, McMath, grade 11, grade 12 classes. Uh, they were taking Japanese at McMath and had two classes of students come to visit us at the temple here. So I, I talked to them for about an hour and I, I gave them uh, some lessons in, in both Japanese. I, I also told them a little history of the temple and uh, explain some characters uh, associated, with, associated with Buddhism that might make it easier for them to understand. Um, I think I did it before here. I explained like the character of temple, where that comes from. And it's uh, made up of two halves. Uh, the, the top half comes from the character for foot and the bottom half comes from the character of hand and foot and hand make up a temple. And why that's important is that the temple was a place of practice. So where you move your foot and your hand to uh, practice. So it was, it was a traditional place where monks and nuns would practice. But I also told them that uh, in contrast to that, in our temples, we, it is a place to listen for the Dharma for anybody to come in. You don't have to be a monk or a nun. It could be anyone to come in and listen. So anyways, after I talked to them for about an hour, they went. And then um, uh, two days after, I believe it was, uh, in our mailbox, we had these uh, papers with thank you written on it. And I'm just gonna bring it up closer to the screen. I was surprised because they were all written in very nice Japanese. Um, and uh, they, they, you know, said thank you and they enjoyed the, the visit, etc. But as I showed you on those um, pages, there were diagrams of these, uh, what we call jizo bosatsu in, in Japanese. Uh, in uh, Sanskrit or Pali, it's kishitagarba. Uh, Kshitagarbha is the name of this bodhisattva. But this bodhisattva is quite, is, is very, very uh, popular in Japan. And you see it all over the place. It is a bodhisattva uh, who is supposed to protect children. Um, it is also unique in that it, 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 they, there's a whole culture around these bodhisattvas um, as they're supposed to also protect uh, it, uh, fetuses. So when the mother has either had a miscarriage or even an abortion, um, these bodhisattvas are supposed to protect those uh, children. Um, it's also a protector of uh, pregnant women and protector of travelers as well. And also uniquely um, in Japan, throughout Japan, each individual community has their own little protector. So it's not uncommon. If you go to Japan, you'll see in the middle of this very urban city, it could be even like at the intersection of a very busy road, you'll find a very small shrine. And often they'll have this 
bodhisattva there. And that bodhisattva is supposed to protect um, that area. Um, interestingly enough, I, I read an article uh, by this one minister who was uh, saying it's very strange in Japan now because of the uh, modernization of things. Some places they're expanding their roads and they're actually getting rid of these small shrines. And he said it was ironic that these shrines are supposed to be protecting travelers and yet they're getting rid of them. Uh, and, and so he was sort of uh, lamenting at the fact that they're, they're doing this. But this Bodhisattva, uh, uh, Jizo Bosatsu, is a very important uh, Bodhisattva throughout Japan. And the whole idea behind that is the sense of security, of being uh, protected. And I think all of us want to have that sense of security. Um, we want to feel that wherever we are, we are, we have some kind of protection. And in fact, this is where in our temple, it is very important for us to understand the uh, workings of what we call Amida Buddha. And that's the Buddha that we see here. And in, according to the Jodo Shinshu tradition, um, we come to the temple to listen to the wishes of this Buddha, Amida Buddha, or what we call the Hongang, the primal vow of Amida Buddha. Hongang means, yeah, well, primal and then uh, vow or wish. And that the primal wish of Amida Buddha, the Buddha is telling us, come as we are, just as we are, with all our faults, all our warts, whatever it, it may be, but we are accepted just as we are. And in that uh, understanding, it is not through my working, it is not because I am deserving, but it is the, the Dharma itself, the greatness of the Dharma that makes me realize my silly self. And yet at the same time, also realize I am accepted just as I am. <coughs> analogy of the computers to make it easier for people to understand. Um, today, we're you know, see, for those who are on Zoom, uh, you're using this technology. But, you know, the, um, most of it, well, I'm a PC user. So if you're a PC user, you, you're probably familiar with Windows, right? We all have Windows that we use. But prior to Windows, computers were very, very complicated. You had to learn all this very difficult computer lingo and language. And, and um, it was Bill Gates and his team, I guess, that created this very simple to use system where the end user ourselves, all we have to do is click on a button to use it, right? Most of the work is done from the other side. They make it easier for us, right? So in similar sense, in our Nembutsu teachings, all the work is actually done through the Dharma. It's not because I'm intelligent or I'm wise or anything like that. It's, it's life itself teaches us that our, to see ourselves. And we begin to see both our foolishness, but also as we are being accepted. And this is what we listen to when we come to the temple. This is the calling voice of Amida Buddha. This is the primal vow of Amida Buddha. If we listen and truly listen, not half-hearted listen, but truly listen, we can open our hearts and we can see or we can hear the, this calling voice. And then out of gratitude, naturally, we want to put our hands together to say thank you for, again, allowing me this opportunity to reflect and to see myself. And just as these bodhisattvas, jizo bosatsu throughout Japan are there to protect all those in suffering, uh, Amida's calling voice is there to remind us as we are, we are in the grasp of compassion. And so at this time, I'd like to ask you, please join me in Gasho as I end my talk today.
namo amida vatsu namo amida vatsu namo thank you everyone for joining us um and if i had mentioned it before we have now finalized the uh information for the Vancouver Island Obon Cemetery Tour in August. It'll be from August 11th to the 14th. And if you want more information, you can either get it at your local temple, uh, Ted uh, Akune, who's the president of the JS, uh, BC, JSBT, uh, uh, BC Jodo Shisha Buddhist Temples Federation, uh, has sent out the information to the presidents, I believe, of the temples. Um, Ted, did you want to say a couple words? I'm just going to spotlight Ted, uh, Ted Akune. Um, where are you? Can you hear me now, Reverend? Yes, we can. Uh, thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Federation, I just uh, want to thank, um, well, first of all, thank Reverend Grant and, and everyone here. Uh, on Zoom, and and secondly, um, as Reverend said, the uh, Vancouver Island Obon tour is uh, the information has been sent out to all the presidents of all the uh, the temples, and and so for specific information you could get it there. But just broadly speaking, um, it's going to begin on August the eleventh which is a Thursday, and we will be returning on the Sunday, which I think is the 14th. 14th. And uh, the bus will be leaving from uh, the Stevenson Temple. And I just want to add that uh, this year, uh, it's been extended to three evenings, four days, three evenings. And, and I just want to also mention that uh, because of the survivor's grant, which we were awarded $9,500. So this is why we've been able to keep the costs down as much as possible, while at the same, same time extending it for an extra day. So uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for, for all of us here to, to have a nice short holiday, yeah. while at the same time, um, you know, visiting all the the uh, grave sites where uh, uh, Japanese Canadians from the early part of our history uh, are are buried. So, so I just want to welcome everyone to uh, come out and and make an uh, make a real effort to attend. I think I think also it'll be a very uh, fun trip because Reverend Grant's uh, you know included a number of things. And, and uh, we're hoping that uh, the, the food part is going to be exceptional as well. So, so please uh, make every effort if you can. Uh, there's only room for approximately 45, 48 people. So, so uh, I would suggest if you're interested, do not delay in terms of filing your application. So, so again, thank you very much, Reverend Grant, and thank you for uh, to everyone here. Thank you, Ted, uh, for that. Um, okay. And also, um, please uh, remember that we do have coming up also uh, at the in July, July sixteenth, we'll be having our bon odori here. Um, and if you wish to volunteer for that, please uh, contact our temple office, Keiko. We'll, we'll be happy to take it down your information. So uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, is on the 16th and on the 17th, we have our Obon service here. Okay. So thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you to those who came to the temple. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grant. That's it. Grant. Thank you. We're doing it online. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Gus. Hi. Gus, come say hi. No, because uh, Hi, Gus. Hi. He, he heard you speaking, so he came oh. over. <laughs> Great job, job. Dad. Thank <laughs> you, Bobby. Thanks, everyone. Um,
Yeah, so when they took the applications, it was still early in February, I believe it was. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen with the COVID. So we just kept it one more year online. So I actually made a little video here. I can show you. Uh, where did I have that? I think I have it on here. So I, yeah, I'll show you. Um, okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you.